All right, 7.5, we are going to be applying properties of logarithms, all right? We had, a, we had in the previous and throughout the year, we had properties of exponents. Well, if you remember just recently, exponential functions are inverses of logarithmic functions. So if we have properties of laws of exponents, we have properties of logarithms. And they're very similar. The product property states this. Here I have a single log of some base, but this right here, there'd be a multiply. So if I'm multiplying, that means I can expand it into multiple logarithms, all right? And multiplication means addition, just like in properties of exponents. If the bases are the same, I'm multiplying, I can add their exponents. So that's, that's where this is coming from. Quotient property, as division, so that means it's a subtraction, right? So I'm taking a single logarithm and I'm expanding it. Single logarithm, expanding it. Power property, all it means is this should be a log, L-O-G, not lob. <laughs> all right. Now, so right here, if I have an exponent here, that means I can bring it down and becomes the coefficient. Right? This is a very powerful um, property, particularly when we, begin, when we begin solving equations. All right, so these are the three properties that we're going to be using. All right, so the first example, I want to, hang on, let me see if I can do this better. Keep the three properties here. I want to expand 3x to the 4. Now, this is called a common logarithm. The reason why is because there's nothing here. So that means this is actually base 10. Now, we don't have to write it because if I wanted to be base 10, I just write log and it's understood to be there. I just bring that um, let you know. All right, so we are going to expand. See, I have this times this. So this is single logarithm because there's only one word that says log. I'm going to expand it. Well, if this is multiplication, I'm going to use the product property. So I'm going to take the single logarithm and I'm going to break it into multiple logs. Now how many? Well, there's only two bases that are being multiplied. So that means I'm going to have two logs. So I take log of three plus log of the other base, x to the fourth. So we expanded it, now we want to clean it up. If you notice here, this one has an exponent. So that means by the power property, I can bring this exponent down. So the first log stays the same. This four now becomes the coefficient. And there you go. I just expanded a logarithm. Let's look at another example. <clears throat> All right, if you notice, I have division, so I'm going to be using the quotient property. So I got a top and a bottom, so that means there's going to be two logs. But if you look at the bottom, there's two bases being multiplied, so that means I can pull that apart. So I have one, two, and then I pull that apart, that'll end up giving me three all together. So I'm gonna have three logs in my answer. Two for the bottom, one for the top, all right? So we do the quotient first. So the quotient means I take the log of whatever the base is four, take the top, which is x, minus log of the same base, and the bottom, which is 3y. Now there's only one base here, so I just leave it alone. Now here I got two parts. I got a 3 and a y, so that means I'm going to get two logs from that. So I'm using the product property. So I'm going to take the log of 4 of 3 plus log of 4 
of y. There's no exponents, so we are all done, and there we go. So I took a single logarithm and expanded it into three logs. And our last example, oops, let me try that again. Our last example, all right, if you notice, I have a quotient, so I got a top and bottom. So in the top, I'm going to have one, two, on the bottom, I have one, two. So I'm going to have four logs when I expand this. All right. So let's do the quotient first. Take the log base 7 of the top minus log base 7 of the bottom. All right. So I have applied the quotient problem. Now I'm going to apply the product property to both of these. As you notice here, I got a 3 and an x and a 5 and a y. All right. So we've got log base 7 of 3 plus log base 7 of x squared minus log base 7 of 5 plus log base 7 of y cubed. All right, so therefore, here's my four logs. <clears throat> now we deal with all the exponents. So we got one, two. So remember, those become the coefficients. So now we have log base 7 of 3 plus 2 log base 7 of x minus log base 7 of 5 plus 3 log base 7 of y. There we go.